part one of the Castro Edge Hot Tuna Challenge looked at the cars under $75,000. The 18-car field took up 60% of the entire competition and for good reason. Cars in that price group are the most commonly modified. Once cars go over 75k, people tend to think the cars are good enough as they are and that you would only ruin them. Well, this is only partly true. They can be ruined if done wrong, but the cars in this group most certainly haven't. <laughs> The 75 to 150k group may have only had seven cars, but it was a very diverse field once you disregard that there was three Mercedes C63 AMGs. Aussie muscle in its prime with the Walkinshaw Performance GTS, American muscle with a right-hand drive converted Camaro, German engineering at its finest with a turbocharged Porsche Cayman from Harding Performance, and the lightweight track weapon Lotus Elise which has drunk a few cups of concrete thanks to Simply Sports Cars. Quite simply, the Lotus was an animal. 224 kilowatts at the wheels may sound small in this company, but when you weigh almost half as much as the V8 powered machines, the power to weight ratio is easily the highest of the bunch. How does 100 kilometers per hour in under four seconds and an 11.8 second quarter mile sound? Well, it sounded like this. It's a shame the weather ruined the Lotus's shot at glory around Eastern Creek. <laughs> Like you're having fun out there. Yeah, that's one of the best cars we've ever driven. Off its head. Yeah. Even in the wet. You just got to use the gear about twice as high. Yeah. And just to let it talk. Yeah, whoa. When it hits, man. You can well, spend all day in that thing. It's a scary little car. Yeah. It'll bite you. In complete contrast was the Camaro from Crossover Car Conversions. It was completely standard, making it easier to drive in the wet. Had a little bit more understeer, mainly just in the high speed corners, mm -hmm. but it actually got its power down a bit better. I don't know if it was the delivery of the engine, but or just less power when the wet, you could actually, you know, give it full throttle and let it run. And get on with it. Get on with it, but the other thing's just one of the wheel spins. Stock it may be, but 6.2 litres of Chevy V8 means it's only slow compared to the present company. And how does Australia's top dog in the muscle car pack fare against the US of A? Pretty damn well, actually. The Walkinshaw Performance GTS was the most powerful car in the group by over 40 kilowatts, and it certainly showed, in both good and bad ways. As it comes in, you just can't control the power in the wet. So. <laughs> High speed is quite loose in the rear you know, in these conditions, so get away in it pretty quickly. One car everyone was anxious to see in action was the turbocharged and wide bodied Porsche Cayman of Harding Performance. With a 410 kilowatt turbo kit, it struggled with traction on the strip, but still managed a low 12 at just on 200 kilometres per hour. That's fast but Morley wanted to go quick. Another attempt didn't go to plan though. Turns out the axles don't like the sort of power this Cayman puts down, making the Porsche the only DNF of this year's event. Now onto the trio of AMGs. Although they are the same car and have similar modifications, they are all done with a different flavor. 
The Ram Speed car is still the gentleman's Euro muscle car, using a Brabus upgrade kit to give it extra power without ruining refinement. still uses factory suspension and road tyres, which in these conditions helped it as opposed to hinder it. Suspension is the best thing about this thing. It just hasn't been dropped on its guts. It's still got some, some compliance in the suspension. So this was a better... Yeah, a lot better feel. Um, you can actually feel what the car's doing in the wet and uh, obviously nowhere near as much power as the other thing, but it makes up for it around the corners. The Murano's example is the ultimate stealth bomber. A keen eye will spot the lowered stance and semi-slick tyres and will hear the finely tuned exhaust. But don't let the white stock looking Merc fool you. It's damn fast and a capable machine. And last, but certainly not least, the City Performance C63. There is only one way to describe this car. It's an animal. Forget words, just listen to this. This black beast is a mature man's muscle car. It's like going to the summer nats in an expensive suit. On the dyno, it put down an impressive 326 rear wheel kilowatts. A hundred more than factory and nearly as much power as the standard flywheel. Unbelievable, it can only use quarter throttle, so uh, the, the conditions aren't, don't suit it, but man, I'd love to let that thing loose in the dry. Just getting wheel spin and you know, could only get full throttle about halfway down the main straight, it's just any more than that, just wanted to light the tyres up. The car isn't just about noise and power, it can steer with the best of them. It's so good that Luffy had to steal a drive off Paul Morris and take it out again. Forget lap times, he just wanted to have some fun. Look, the City Performance C63, any luxury car that'll run sub 12, nearly 200 kilometres an hour, that's an awesome bit of gear. Like, it's got such good power, pretty hard to get off the line, but once you do get it going, it's brilliant. But also, the, uh, the Walking Short Performance, the GDS, heaps of power, that supercharger it gives it a lot of torque. It's a tricky car to get off the line, but once you do, it really runs some strong numbers. Look, certainly our, uh, our expression session at the end in the uh, City Performance C63 is probably the most memorable part of the day for me. It was just a, uh, it's great when you get an owner of a car, say, here's the keys, go out and uh, flog it round and, uh, and put on a bit of a show. So look, those guys, they, they put together some great cars and that's the 63 it's such a sweet little package. It's a, it's a four door luxury saloon that's got mega performance, it handles well and man does it drift. To get the full rundown of all the modifications and the results, check out the November issue of Motor Magazine on sale now. Next in the Castro Edge Hot Tuna Challenge is the over 150k category. This is the stuff of schoolboy dreams. Stay tuned.